Hey everybody, this is Bottom Shelf Bar, where we go to the liquor store and buy liquor from the bottom shelf. We're going to drink it and tell you whether or not it's worth drinking. I'm Paul, and I'm joined by my guest star, my good friend Connor. Hey Connor, hey. what are we drinking? Today we're going to be drinking this fine, fine Bellows Gin, which I found on the bottom shelf for a mere $8.99. We'll be having it as a shot, and then we'll be trying it in a few simple cocktails with fun challenges in between each one. Let's have shots! <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, a brief history of the company Bellows. Um, I don't know. Are they shell I don't know any history of the company Bellows because uh, I don't think there really is any. On the bottle, it says it's from a, I think, 18th century English formula. Can you confirm? Well, it says it's a name of honor. Oh, yeah, from a famous 17th century English formula. Ah, okay, 17th but century. Even better. You can also just, like, <laughs> look up Washington's beer recipe, so I don't think that means much. <laughs> no, of course it doesn't. Uh, let's try it and find out. All right. Cheers, me. Cheers. <laughs> it is perceptibly alcoholic. <laughs> not as bad as I was expecting, actually. It's Ooh. not poison. Uh, it's oh. not really good. strongly reminiscent of gin. No, it's not really good. Um, <laughs> it really tastes like slightly flavored, really bad vodka. I mean, that's mostly what gin is. <laughs> it's just flavored vodka. So that's not the biggest surprise, but that does not absolve it from being very bad. I will say, though, a lot of gins I've tried, taking a shot of it, is like having a mouthful of pine needles. <laughs> Not in a bad way, that's just how gin is. Well, I would think that would be in a bad way regardless. <laughs> You're like, pine needles are sharp, <laughs> my guy. Well, taste-wise. All right, all right. Obviously, texture-wise, it's a little <laughs> different from pine needles. But this this lacks that. It Like, the botanical flavor is there, but it doesn't have any bite. All right, good analysis. Let's do something stupid. Yes. Well, that, that'll be a cut. <laughs> <laughs> cut! All right, so for our first challenge and for the challenge that we're going to be doing for each gin drink, we have some vampire teeth, and we will be transferring these here marshmallows from this plate to this plate using only our vampire teeth and our mouths. Happy so, Halloween! <laughs> and whoever finishes first will be the winner of nothing. Let's right. do it. All right. Three, two, one, go. Okay. It's harder than it looks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> Paul is the winner. I am apparently not very adept at marshmallow teeth. Marshmallow teeth? I guess that's what we're calling this. Teeth. Uh, we'll catch you in a few with the next drink. <laughs> Alright, so first up we're going to be having a gin and tonic. Pretty simple. This will be the second gin and tonic I've ever had, behind one that a guy smuggled into a college campus event in his jacket. In France, though, not in the U.S. <laughs> like, we were all legal. Does that matter? Probably not. Alright, let's drink it. <laughs> It is a gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't particularly care for gin and tonics. Uh, tonic water doesn't taste that good. Um, we added a little twist of lime to this just to give it a little, little zhuzh. Uh, lime should be in everything with alcohol, almost. I'll fight you on that. I'll accept it. I don't. I don't want to fight you. Um, this is fine. It's not. It's kind of forgettable. It's not good. <laughs> like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna remember drinking this for many reasons. Uh, this is probably what you would get served in a bar, though. Well, it'd be fresh lime, possibly. Yeah, we're using great value lime juice. All right, so we're back with our vampire teeth. I love these things. These might be one of my favorite things about Halloween. Why? Uh, well, it's it's just you on that front, then. All right. Second, <laughs> let's do it. Three, two, you can get wrecked. One vampire teeth. <laughs> God damn it! 
All right. One Paul, again. Paul wins again. One again. Somehow. One again. With a shot and an entire gin and tonic in me, or I guess half of a gin and tonic, I am better at this. So we'll see if that trend continues. They're setting up your inhibitions. Something like that. All right. <laughs> Next drink. <laughs> this is a gimlet. A gimlet is made out of lime juice, simple syrup, and gin. So if it's going to be bad in the cocktail, it's going to be bad in the gimlet. All right. Let's let's try it. Mm. It's not great. It's not great. See, the benefit of the gin and tonic was that the tonic water diluted it a bunch, and you couldn't really taste the gin anymore. It just tasted like tonic water. You know, tonic water doesn't taste great, but this just tastes like really bad gin and some lime juice. <laughs> yeah, the... The... The cheap alcohol burn hits you before anything else in the cocktail does, which is a problem. As you were saying that, I, <laughs> I went through the, the experience. Yeah, it, it follows with what just tastes like pure lime syrup. It's just sweet lime and alcohol burn. Um, there's it, This doesn't taste like gin in this drink, honestly. This tastes like, I mean, it tastes more like vodka where it's just alcohol. You know? Yeah, it, it pretty much. The presence of gin in this particular gimlet is unimportant. Like, you took alcohol that is bad, and you put some sugar and some lime juice in it. Yeah. And but now, if you, now if, it tastes like lime juice that has been in my fridge for four months. If you want a good <laughs> gimlet... You're going to make it, I guess, with probably higher-end gin. Yeah. I've never had any gin drinks, so this is all first for me. <laughs> Uh, as someone who enjoys gin drinks a good amount, this is not good. Like, this... If you could hide the Bellows gin in the gin and tonic a little bit, you cannot hide it here. It is, as with the shot, it is on full display as extremely bad gin. Um, it's not, I'm missing the gin flavor a lot. It's not repulsive by any means. Like Paul said, you don't really taste... It, like, it doesn't really taste strongly of... Gin. Anything. <laughs> it just tastes like cheap alcohol. So, with that being said, let's do the challenge once again. Marshmallow teeth again. Uh, and see if I continue to get faster. I'm going to be impressed if by the time we're drunk here, just my teeth. go. <laughs> Alright, let's do it. Alright, we're back with vampire teeth. Now i got to fix my marshmallows. Uh, <laughs> you're actually good at the marshmallow game. Uh, Alright, let's put our teeth in. Maybe I'll win this time. Blah, blah, blah. Three, two, one. Vampire teeth. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. I win. No! <laughs> My crown has been taken <laughs> from me. Well, we still have one more gin drink to try. So Paul will have a chance at redemption. But once again... What do you mean redemption? You'll have a chance to tie. <laughs> nah, I've... <laughs> I've taken the crown. You have to take it back. <laughs> See you in a few with the Tom Collins. Go. So this is a Tom Collins. This is made with lemon juice, simple syrup, gin, of course, and seltzer. So it's kind of like a gimlet, but with lemon instead of lime and also seltzer. So it's really not a gym. A gimlet. Gimlet. Gimlet? Who's gimlet? Small gym? Let's just have a drink. It should be called gimlet because it's made with gin. Gimlet. I'm sure the name came from somewhere else. This is tolerable. I should note that when I was mixing these, I added quite a bit of seltzer. But like, it's true. When you dilute the heck out of this gin, it's okay. Like, it's just... It's like I made a White Claw, but with a little sugar in it. I was gonna say, <laughs> if you gave me this drink and told me it was just like... Like a lemon seltzer, I would believe you. It The gin disappears entirely into this. Yeah, this gin... I think our conclusion for this gin is that it has no personality whatsoever. <laughs> right? Am I wrong there? I would say that's probably right. <laughs> like, when you drink it straight, or as a shot, you can tell that it has a, a little bit of juniper attitude, but as soon as you put it in the, put it in the group... You know, when you put mix it in with pretty much anything, it just becomes alcohol. Yeah. And, you know, if that's what you're going for, like, that's cool. But if you're going for gin, like, this is not... 
It that's doesn't, the thing it doesn't is, really do it. <laughs> it doesn't come through very much on this, but especially with the gimlet, it was literally just it tasted like alcohol. It that that was <laughs> that was the long and short of it. Yeah. It would be worse if it made every drink that we put it in taste like acetone. Oh, and I've had liquid I've had liquor <laughs> like that, so Yeah, this is not the worst thing ever. Like it's not it doesn't taste like toxic waste. Uh Although we may have severe regrets from drinking it tomorrow. <laughs> uh, right now, this is okay. I'll give it a three out of like, five. It's is, very neutral. This is an adequate Tom Collins. Like I can, like I said, we watered this down a fair amount with seltzer. But like this is very drinkable. Uh, Speaking from my experience <laughs> of one other gin and tonic... <laughs> The gin comes through quite a bit. Like it's it's botanical. You you taste the juniper. Um, like I said, mouthful of pine needles, but in a good way. Um, with the gin and tonic, and then with this, where you have anything other than liquor, sugar, and citrus, it just disappears. So I think it's a decidedly neutral liquor. Like I I you could almost just use it in place of anything else. It's it's not it's not a very strongly flavored gin at all. Yeah, it definitely it doesn't have a lot of personality. Like I, I think I said that before. Uh, but you know, it's not. It doesn't ruin a Tom Collins. It, it left something to be desired in the the Gimlet, and it left a little bit to be desired in the Gin and Tonic. But when you just add a ton of seltzer on it, it kind of just disappears. So take that for what you will. I'm gonna finish this, and we're gonna do another challenge. He's gonna get his butt kicked again. Except for the last time. Let's find out. I'm starting to feel it. Yeah, I'm feeling it, Mr. Krabs. I was about to ask that. <laughs> Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? All right. Oh, got... God. There's so much spit on it. <laughs> we've got our vampire teeth. <laughs> they have some saliva on them. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, the more saliva on the fangs, the gentler the piercing. Yeah, but they're slippery. <laughs> anyway. Three, two, one. Go. Ah. <laughs> no. I win. <laughs> no. I got the first one off the plate. I had to put it back. God damn it. I dropped, oh. I, I dropped one on the table and I still picked it up. So I don't know what your excuse is. Uh, once again, <laughs> as I become more inebriated, this I is bottom shelf bar. More effective. Uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> This has been Bottom Shelf Bar. We tried Bellows Gin. It was okay, but I don't think I would recommend it. It was very forgettable. It kind of disappeared once you added some things to it. It'd be good in Jungle Juice. It would work for Jungle Juice. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, if that's the best thing that you can say about a gin, I don't think that speaks very favorably about this gin. Uh, on a scale of 0 to 5, I think I would give it about a 2 to a 2.5. Uh... If I was buying a gin, I would just save up a little extra money and buy a gin that's actually good. I give it three stars. All right. Very neutral. And you know what? I've had plenty of alcohol that wasn't neutral at all and made your drinks bad. So, all right. I'm kind of here <laughs> for it. So, that's our review of Bellows Gin. Uh, this has been Bottom Shelf Bar. Stay tuned for the next episode that should be posted at the same time as this episode in which we try Bellows Whiskey. Directly after this. <laughs> we, that episode should be a lot of fun because we are going to just get progressively more inebriated. We'll have a new challenge. We'll have Bellows Whiskey. We'll tell you if their whiskey is any better than their gin. So make sure to watch that as well. See you there. <laughs>